Joe in real life. Okay, so this is my deadlift workout. It's at three times speed. Um, it was 25 degrees this morning when I did this in my garage and it was awful. I attempted to warm up very vigorously. I did a lot of stuff, a lot of squats, non-seen, non-filmed, uh, and I couldn't get anywhere. In fact, I would say my last set of deadlifts was the only set I felt warm. And I had done probably at that point an hour of work, like pretty much nonstop. Like I stopped a couple times to go sit by a space heater. We have a shitty little space heater in this garage. Uh, just because my hands were so cold. <laughs> um, all this being said, uh, it sounds like I'm, I'm complaining a lot, but um, it was a great workout. I started at 135, and then I just upped the weight at little increments. My last set of 10, I did five sets of 10, was 165. And honestly, that weight was too light. But I was just so cold that I didn't dare go heavier. Like the, the first set, which was easily the worst set, at 135, like the bar moved easily. My bar speed was great. But like, I was scared. I was scared I was gonna pull something. And man, I did so much ridiculous bullshit before I even touched that bar. Um, a lot of bear crawls, a lot of kettlebell swings, a lot of squats, and just nothing. I couldn't get any heat in my body. I need a pair of sweatpants, man. Um, the whole time I'm listening to, the whole time I'm doing this workout, I'm listening to the Rick Rubin podcast. I didn't even know he had a podcast. And he did an interview with Nick Cave, who's one of my absolute favorite musicians. And um, I don't know, maybe, maybe our, our greatest songwriter. Like, I think about him in the same breath that I think about Leonard Cohen, who's a great songwriter, but I don't think a very good musician and um, Nina Simone or uh, Joanna Newsom. I think he'd probably hate being compared to Joanna Newsom, but uh, I love Joanna Newsom and she's a hell of a songwriter. I don't know, maybe he wouldn't, it's hard to say. But uh, Jesus, what an incredible interview. What an impossible interview. Um, I didn't know I was a Rick Rubin fan until just recently. And I found out he has a podcast, and his podcast, man, he does ads just like every other podcast, but he produces them himself, and he makes them like old-timey television, like old, old television or radio ads um, with this retro music and this like really professional voiceover, and it's just like, wow, man, wow, they're so good. They are so fucking good. Um, like it's the only podcast I've ever listened to where I look forward to the ads. There's an Element ad, the LMNT uh, electrolyte product. And I genuinely look forward to that ad. <laughs> like it's a, it's a nice palate cleanser to the conversation. You get a little break, you get this beautiful ad, um, which is like, Obviously, it's Rick Rubin, so it's just masterfully produced, you know? Uh, and it really takes you back in time. I'm listening to him interview Owen Wilson right now, and it's much the same. I am not a huge Owen Wilson fan, or what's that guy, uh, Wes Anderson. I don't really, I don't dislike those movies, but I don't, I don't love them, you know? I think I loved Rushmore. Um... And really that was it, you know? Oh, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Did he do that? I don't remember, but I, I really like the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Maybe that's irrelevant. Um, which isn't to say they're bad movies. They're just, it's not my thing, you know? Um, but I'm finding Owen Wilson to be very interesting and really charming. Oh, these presses. So it's just to keep my glute mead active and they're going absolutely awful. I do them after the deadlifts while I'm still breathing hard. And man, they suck. They're, <laughs> I'm just moving so bad, 
you know um <laughs> it's a real struggle but i'm enjoying the new routine you know this is only week one i have my overhead press day tomorrow but i'm i might do a fun lift instead we'll see how i feel i am so sore that's the other thing i do these abdominal supersets in between my main lifts and today is obliques like you're seeing but yesterday it was the ab wheel so I rolled out on the ab wheel and I like my midsection is destroyed I I can't like I can't cough without extreme pain um, eating kind of hurts you know just that sort of involuntary activation of your midline where you're doing simple tasks is like a constant reminder of like that I deconditioned my core to the extreme. Uh, so I want to watch a set of this. I'm taking a long break in between and I was probably listening to Nick Cave, but, um, or no, that might've been a part where I warmed myself. Yeah, I was just, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't doing a very good job of generating any heat. So I went and sat huddled against the space heater for a second. Um, and I, I just want to watch a set to see what my form looks like. People always tell me that my deadlift looks like an RDL. And like, man, look at my mechanics, okay? Like, I've got long tibs, short femurs for my size, and a long torso. It's, no, those look good. They look okay for me, you know? It's really hard for me not to pitch forward like that. Like... Like the space between my, from my groin to my throat is an eternity, you know? Uh, that's the bulk of my height by far. It's, I gotta, it's gotta be as long as my legs, maybe longer. <laughs> um, and yeah, so where was I at? Oh, before, um, before I got rolling with my workout this morning, I got some writing done and I've been writing every day for the last little bit and it's been really great you know and especially today today was the day I felt it tip over where like I was actually get able to get words out that I liked um kind of in mass every writing session I get some words out that I like and honestly I'm happy with a phrase or a sentence but today I got a couple paragraphs which that feels good you know, it feels like I'm getting somewhere with that. And there's someone I work with, which I don't want to out her yet, but she might do some illustrations for my writing. And I'm kind of, I've shared a couple poems with her. And I don't, I'm just, even if nothing comes of it, which very likely it won't, um, I just like having a little pressure on that, having a little, a little force to help me get, to help me stay motivated, you know? That somebody's watching, that somebody cares whether or not I do my work or don't. Uh, I'm self-motivated for the most part. You know, I can work without uh, encouragement, but dude, it helps, it helps. <laughs> I mean, it just does, you know? So, yeah, that's my life at a glance, man. That's how I'm doing. I'm sore. I'm tired. It's freezing cold. But I'm happy. A lot of things are going my way lately. And it feels nice to be getting back to something that feels like normalcy. A version of myself that, that I'm not just disappointed in. You know? Um, huh. I... I kind of surprised myself with that statement. I didn't realize I was disappointed in myself or I didn't realize it out loud, but I have felt that way. You know? Um, huh. I hurt my own feelings for a second there. Well, hey, I guess that's all right, you know? Truth. <laughs> the wisdom of truth. Or I don't think it's wisdom yet. It's not wisdom until I can say it without it hurting my feelings. Then it's wisdom. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I love you.